Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Miss Arneson, and I'm going to read to you this reference so that if you want to follow along with me instead of reading on your own, you are welcome to do so. This is for lesson, I think, five. Let me just double check. Yeah, lesson five, which is about plate tectonics and the lithosphere of the Earth. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Introduction. The basin and range province centered on the state of Nevada and extends from southern Oregon to western Texas is an immense region of alternating north-south trending faulted mountains and flat valley floors. It has no counterpart elsewhere in the United States. The province was created about 20 million years ago as the Earth's crust stretched, thinned, and then broke into some 400 mountain blocks that partly rotated from their originally horizontal positions. These mountains of late Precambrian and Paleozoic rock continue to erode and fill the intervening valleys with fresh sediment. The animations in this set may address geologic aspects seen in the basin and range such as... Okay, so this is background information for these animations, which you can go and check out, but you need to understand what's in here first. So this here is showing us the basin and range area, or it's calling it a province, so it's a landform of the United States. And so you can see all of these like little veins of mountains, it looks like. And it's kind of like wrinkles on like a really old person's arm. That's probably a mean way to think of it, but that's what it makes me think of. And you can see there's like these deeper parts right here in between the mountain ranges. That's what the basin and range is. And it extends mostly Nevada, like all of Nevada is the basin and range, but then it spreads over into Utah and then there's a little chunk that kind of goes around like this all the way into New Mexico. And a little teeny bit of Texas, so El Paso is still part of the basin and range. Why is the crust so thin in the basin and range? Tension, here's a note, each one of these little words that has a star after it, an asterisk, on the last page there's a lovely vocabulary, like little glossary here, so you can find um, the definitions of what those words mean. So that's why, that's why I picked this resource. It's really well done. Tension created by the movements of the Earth's tectonic plates have stretched the Earth's surface to a breaking point. The entire region has been pulled apart, fracturing the tectonic plate and creating large faults. When viewed from a satellite, they look like an army of caterpillars. It is actually a series of adjacent north-south oriented mountain ranges that were created when this region was stretched, causing the surface of the earth to fracture into blocks that tilt and alternately drop or rise. Why is the area elevated? When the plates pull apart, they thin, allowing the hot mantle to rise closer to the surface of the earth. The hot rock is buoyant, allowing the region to rise upward. The average elevation is 1,400 meters or 4,600 feet above sea level. So let's look at these diagrams because I honestly read stuff like this and then like I just want to see what it looks like in a diagram. So luckily this has some diagrams. So this is um, frame grabs from animation. So this means there's a model that they made to kind of show what happens in the basin and range to form these landforms. And so here's before and here's after which is funny because A is before and B is after, even though they start with opposite letters, but A comes first, right? So here's basically what the land looked like at some point. At some point, it was mostly flat. But because of the, the crest movements, um, this area in between these two GPS points, for example, is getting stretched out. And what happens when that occurs is that it gets stretched, and I mean, this is rock, so when rock stretches, like imagine if you were pulling apart rocks, some parts of it would kind of like crumble and fall in between other parts of it. And that's where we get the basins, which are the low valley spots here, and the ranges, which are the more mountainous and higher elevation parts. Now this also thins the crust, and so it's easier for the, um, the mantle underneath to be pushing on that part of the crust because it's thinner than the surrounding crust 
And so it gets a really high elevation because of that. All right. Why did so many volcanoes erupt in the middle of the tectonic plate? Although volcanoes usually form along the edges of interacting tectonic plates, geologic forces can produce volcanoes in the middle of a, te uh, in the middle of a tectonic plate. So I want to pause for a second. We don't have these different plate tectonics here. Like we don't have several plates inside of New Mexico. But what's happening is that our plate is stretching out. And so you usually don't find volcanoes in the middle of a plate, but we have, or any sort of like tectonic activity like um, earthquakes or hot springs, all of those things we usually find at plate boundaries, especially when there's um, a plate boundary that one of them is moving, like if this one was moving north and this one was moving south, that would cause a lot of earthquakes. If one plate was subducting an, a, under another, then that would give us a lot of volcanoes um, as well because there would be all of this melting rock getting pushed under another crest layer. But right here where we have like Yellowstone and we have all of these exciting volcanic activities, it's right in the middle of a plate and that's weird. So that's why we're looking at this a little closer. Continental rifting leads to the creation of faults and a thinning of the tectonic plate that allows magma to reach the surface, which is a volcano. Remember when magma reaches the surface, it's called lava? As the plate thins, the hot mantle rises closer to the surface, and when it reaches lower pressure, the rock begins to melt, creating magma. This magma is under high pressure and is being squeezed up through the faults. So in all of those little places where this rock chunks have broken down, then you're going to get some um, lava that's going to come on up through that plate. What types of volcanoes are in this region? Cinder Cones, Lava Beds National Park, Sconchin Butte Lava Beds National Monument and Craters of the Moon National Monument, Lava Domes that are like Mammoth Mountain and Coast Coso volcanic field and giant calderas like in Long Valley. So in New Mexico, we have what's called the Valles caldera, and that is a landform like this. And then we also have um, a pretty dormant volcano really close to Las Cruces. Are any of the, these volcanoes active today? None of the volcanic areas in the basin and range province are actively erupting. The last eruption was hundreds of years ago. However, several areas do show signs of activity, including the release of large amounts of carbon dioxide gas from beneath the surface of the Earth. Long Valley Caldera, Mammoth Lakes, and Craters of the Moon are technically considered active because they have the potential to erupt in the future. They are not extinct volcanoes. Long Valley Caldera is one of the largest calderas on Earth. It produced one of the largest eruptions on the North American continent. We can't predict the Long Valley Caldera eruption with any certainty. The last eruption in this region was about 1800, and in the past eruptions have happened about every 500 years. The Long Valley Caldera experiences earthquakes, swarms, ground deformation, and carbon dioxide emissions, which are carefully monitored by the USGS Long Valley Volcano Observatory. However, unrest of this type can last for decades or even centuries without leading to an interruption. Will any new volcanoes form in this region? The basin and range has a thinner tectonic plate and higher heat flow than the rest of the contiguous United States, which implies that the hotter mantle is near the surface and could lead to the formation of new volcanoes. The most active extension is taking place in the basin range province is in the northwest sector. Thus, that would be the region of interest. In fact, that is where the youngest volcanic rocks are today. How do we know the area is actively extending? GPS units placed all over the region show that parts of the region are on the move relative to the stable North American continent. Many are moving relative to Colorado. See the images on the lower right of page 1. If the mountains are eroding, why don't they fill up the valleys? The mountains rose and the valleys dropped faster than erosion could keep up. See the image below. This is a region, this is a region that is not in equilibrium. Over time, millions of years, if extension stops, the mountains will level off. 
And then we have the areas here with um, the definitions of all of those vocabulary words. So this is just an explanation of the basin and range, but I want to look a little closer at um, the one in tier C because that's what we're talking about right now. Okay, guys, thank you for listening.